Twitler from My Bilingual Life. I'm here to help you become bilingual. I recently did a lesson on the subject of personal pronouns in Spanish. I'll link that video here and in the description in case you need to review it. Today, I'd like to share with you some of the most common errors I see using the personal pronouns in Spanish. First, this topic has fewer errors than most topics because in Spanish, it's common to drop the subject, especially pronouns in regular speaking. For example, instead of saying, yo voy a la escuela, I can simply say, voy a la escuela. Due to the conjugation of the verb, the subject is understood and many native speakers will drop it. I would translate both of these as, I go to school. One of the most common mistakes I hear is the mispronunciation of ella, which means she in English. Remember, the double L in Spanish makes the y sound. I have heard many incorrect variations of this word, and I'm not going to repeat them because I don't want it to get stuck in your mind. This word is correctly pronounced ella. Ella. The next few errors are not evident in speaking, only in writing. Read this next sentence and see if you can find the mistake. En va a la escuela. He goes to school in English. What's wrong with this sentence? En should always be written with an accent mark on the E. Now try this sentence. Tú vas a la escuela. You go to school. What's the error in this sentence? Right. Tú should always have an accent on the U. Now try this one. Tú y yo vamos a la escuela. You and I go to school. What's wrong now? We have the correct accent on tú. So that's not the problem here. In this sentence, yo should not be capitalized. This is a little confusing because I is always capitalized in English, but yo in Spanish is not like that. It's only capitalized at the beginning of a sentence or in a title. Also, while you might say tu y yo, most of the time that will change to nosotros or nosotras if both people are female. Nosotros vamos a la escuela. We go to school. Okay, one last example. What's wrong with this sentence? Ella y usted van a la escuela. She and you, formal, go to school. This is a little awkward because most of the time, ella y usted would be changed to ustedes. Ustedes van a la escuela. You go to school. But let's just pretend we want to keep it as ella y usted. What is wrong? I hope that you remember that usted and ustedes, when abbreviated, will always be capitalized. So there's two ways to fix this. The first one would be to capitalize the abbreviation usted. The next way would be to write out the word. In that case, it doesn't need a capital letter. So let's recap some important rules to remember. Number one, N and tu need accent marks. Number two, yo is not always capitalized, only at the beginning of the sentence or maybe in a title. Number three, Usted and ustedes are capitalized in the abbreviation. The full words use regular capitalization rules. I also want to mention that even if it's abbreviated, you say the full word, just like in English, usted or ustedes. So most of these mistakes happen in writing. The good news is that even though the accent mark changes the meaning of the word in these cases, the context of the sentence would make the correct meaning apparent. In other words, these would not be major mistakes that affect comprehension. 
when I was teaching high school Spanish, I would consider these a spelling mistake and only deduct a half point for the error. I will also note that these are common mistakes I have seen in the native speakers I know. Few of the people I regularly communicate with in Spanish use the correct capitalization rules or the correct accents on tu and el. I will also mention that different technologies make accent marks difficult at times. For example, I cannot use accent marks on the Zoom whiteboard. If anyone knows of a solution other than manually writing them in, I'd love to hear it. Please let me know in the comments. So accent marks are often neglected when you're communicating with technology that doesn't make them easy to add. So I hope this has been helpful to see some of the most common errors when using the subject personal pronouns in Spanish. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can make sure to get the next lesson. I'll be back soon with more lessons to help you build your Spanish.